back then it was at a point where picking up the phone and calling someone and talking to a stranger was the most terrifying thing. I was too unwell to be able to leave the house really. I spent most of my time in my room hiding with the curtains closed, which is not a good way to stay mentally well, but I was that unwell with that little support and this was exacerbating the situation. They put me straight onto Job Seekers and I got a medical deferral for the entire six months I was on it. Every two weeks I'd get these letters saying, you're going to lose your benefit if you don't show up to the seminar. You know, being told repeatedly you're going to lose the thing that's keeping you in a house and semi-fed, even though it's not quite enough and, you know, your bill's paid. That, it's terrifying and it felt like there wasn't any way out. It felt like there wasn't a solution. I would contact WINS and say, I'm not meant to be getting these letters. Why am I getting these letters? And they would apologize and say, you've been put on the wrong database. But then it wouldn't be fixed. Having to go in every month with a, um, you know, the medical certificate saying that I'm not able to work. And it was exhausting. Like I was going through all of this for something that I was very much entitled to that legally I should have been getting. And then in May, I got a letter saying, um, that WINS had decided I was ready to start preparing to meet work testing obligations. Yeah, so that had huge, huge impacts on my mental health. Like I, I was with the DHB's mental health services, but they're underfunded and they weren't able to provide the support I needed. And I couldn't see my GP as regularly as I needed to. And it all turned to custard. At the end of May, I had a, about a week-long stint where I was doing really badly. I knew my mental health was deteriorating. At the start of that week, I was actively seeking help myself and the local psych wards were all full and I knew that I wasn't going to be able to keep safe. I went to the local crisis team and they told me and my flatmate that I was fine and there was nothing to worry about. An hour later, I was back in the emergency department, this time by ambulance, and I spent a couple of days up in the general ward in the hospital. Then I got the call saying, you need to go up to ICU, your liver's failing. I just look back at that time and I think I, you know, all I needed was support. I needed to be able to access mental health care and I needed to be able to access a benefit. And the way that both of those systems were set up nearly killed me. I um, gave up on wins. I went in to study again. But for me, even like, even though I was going on to student loan living costs, which was a huge reduction in what I was getting paid, even though I already couldn't afford food before that point, I needed those work test obligations to stop. Those work test obligations that I shouldn't have had in the first place. <laughs>